Welcome everybody to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. So the day before yesterday, we had a guest on to speak about a violent prison murder that he witnessed right before his eyes in the cell block. And a lot of people are saying, man, this guy's a liar. He obviously read it or made it up. Judging by the way he was kind of slow to answer questions, I guess. I don't know, but we're going to be fact checking this guy's story to see if he really was telling the truth. In his story, he said that two guys ended up jumping someone. And during the altercation, a third guy came from behind the individual that's getting jumped and slit his throat. Killed him. Treacherous story, not to mention it's coming from Missouri. You don't see too many inmate on inmate homicides in the Missouri prison system. So I said to myself, it'd probably be easy to find, you know, if they wrote a story on it or whatever. But, and the guest also said you could probably find it on the web somewhere, you know. So that's exactly what I did. I went searching for it online and I couldn't find anything on it anywhere. So finally, I decided to give up after looking for it throughout the day. Couldn't find nothing. And then, you know, a few red flags started flying around in my head. Maybe he is telling a lie. But still, me being me, I believe my guest until the very end. I was just going to let it go, let him ride out with whatever story he said, you know, because I can't fact check it, can't find it. But then I go to view some of the comments again for the video. And man, there's more people saying that this guy's lying. But also, there was another comment, which we're going to get to in a second, that kind of changed the tide. Before we get into this, if you enjoy this type of content, all things lock up and crime related, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Now before we get into the fact checking, let's go ahead and hear him tell the quick story one more time. Yeah, I seen in Crossroads when I first got there. Missouri. Yeah, I seen someone get killed within a couple of weeks of being there. I'm pretty sure you could probably find it online. Yeah, I probably can. I don't know. How, how did that go down? You seen it? Yeah. Jeez. It was in a day room. It was one. It turned out it was over a religious preference or something like that. Mm. A religious preference. I don't fully know, but I guess he's like two or three dudes ran up on one guy in a cell and, you know, beating him up. It ended up spilling out into the day room because the guy was getting, started getting a better hand of the other guys. And another guy that was friends with the, the group of guys or whatever, the two or three dudes, he had ran up with a shank and started stabbing him up and slit him right there. Across his neck, bro. He bled out in the day room. You watched that? Yep. Now, like I said, I did my own research for quite a while on this story and I couldn't find nothing. So I gave up, but I did go back to the comment section. I seen a comment. Like I said in the beginning, it kind of changed the tide of things. It says, bro, it's so crazy hearing this. I know why the guy was stabbed. The Muslim that did it taught me sign language. Their Muslim brother was in the cell with the guy they killed and claimed dude was raping him. The dude claiming this was a short timer and went home after his brothers killed the dude for him. It was wild. Check my page. I know the whole story. Jeff Lane, he went by Muhammad and Nasheed was the other guy. They helped him. Muhammad already had 50 years. They're trying to give him the needle over it or at least was when I was in solitary. All right, so pretty crazy to see a comment like that, you know, co-signing to almost everything that the guy was saying. It was over a religious dispute in a sense, and there was multiple people involved. Not once did he say that this didn't happen. He just said, I can co-sign to it. Now the day progresses, right? I said, all right, well, at least there's a comment in there backing him up a bit. I still haven't found or read anything on it, you know, and in my mind, I could say, man, maybe it's could be possibly one of Tyler's friends, you know, writing a comment to try to help his buddy back up the story and stuff. Because I've seen that happen before, too. You know, friends of the guests on will get in the comment section, speak on their behalf. But they're lying at the same time, right? Just trying to help their buddy or something. I don't know. I've seen it all. Either way, it's good for me to see that someone's backing up his story. Good signs. Good signs. Well, the day progresses. It's Halloween, man, and, you know, had a great Halloween, by the way, out here in Tennessee. First one ever, and it was crazy. They got, like, 20-pound bags. Now, I wake up this morning. It was around 5.30 a.m. I wake up like that every day. 
It's like a mental alarm clock, man. It's crazy. But I'm going through some windows that I had popped open from uh, the day before that I was going to do some videos on, some stories about a Uso gang member from Hawaii. They're calling him a shot caller, but they're trying to give him a death penalty for something he did to an inmate in prison. Right? That's another crazy story you don't want to miss. I'll be bringing to you later on this week. So stay tuned. But as I'm reading that, you know, I press back and I'm trying to get some more information on it. Out of nowhere, I'm not even looking for it. I spent a lot of time trying to find something on this guy's story. Any kind of news article, anything. Nothing. I press back, man, and uh, and boom, right there in front of my eyes, without even trying to find it, was the story that this guy talked about. The Muslim cat slicing the dude's throat, and it's exactly how he said it happened. I found a news story that even showed video of it. I'm going to leave it linked in the comment section below. It shows a gruesome scene, you know, of the situation unfolding. You can watch it yourself, but I'm going to show little snippets, pieces here and there, comparing it to his story. What he said was 100% facts, and it's treacherous. It says that two Crossroads Correctional Center inmates were charged this week with first-degree murder after an incident that allegedly started with a sexual assault and ended with one suspect writing on the floor with his own blood. A probable cause statement alleges Robert M. Goodwin and Jeff Lane stabbed and killed their fellow inmate Larry Miller on June 9, 2014. Probable cause statement alleges Mr. Goodwin waited in Mr. Miller's cell and ambushed him. Keep in mind the guy in the orange is Mr. Miller, the guy that got his neck slit. The guy coming out the cell in the white is one of the Muslim cats. Swinging on him, keep in mind, because one of the other Muslim brothers was saying that the guy in the orange was sexually assaulting him. Court records state that Miller's cellmate Jeffrey Nash concocted a story that Miller sexually assaulted him, knowing the one corrections officer patrolling that area would take him into an office in the back of the housing unit to make a report, leaving the A wing unattended. That's when another inmate, Robert Goodwin, snuck into Miller's cell. You can see Goodwin jump out and attack Miller after he returned from breakfast. It was a full on fist fight until another inmate, Jeff Lane, got involved. That's Lane walking on the first floor so this is retaliation just so that y'all don't get lost here now after seeing the incident from the bottom floor as the video shows mr lane joined stabbing mr miller with the homemade knife eight to ten inches long that right there my friends is what we call in prison a bone crusher another inmate veranda smith attempted to help mr miller and struggled with the pair for possession of the knife when correctional officers arrived they reported seeing mr goodwin holding the weapon now, once detained, Mr. Lane, the individual that stabbed the guy, told correctional officers he saw Mr. Goodwin, one of his Muslim brothers, involved in the incident and got involved himself. Interviews with other inmates seem to indicate the attack was relation on Mr. Miller for forcing a fellow inmate to perform sexual acts on him. Now, it goes on to say that correctional officers in the probable cause statement also said they witnessed Mr. Lane writing Arabic words with the guy's blood. One of the last things he said to the officers after being detained was, that's what you get for messing with Muslims. Either way, I don't know if the Muslim guys that were initially fighting him had any idea that the other dude was going to run up and slit his throat. But also, remember what the guy said in the comment section as well. He said that the guy that they were fighting over or beefing over was a short timer. He went home. But these guys are still in prison, even though they defended them for probably what they think is a justified reason, are never going to be going home, you know, because of this situation. But number one thing you need to take away from this is, man, and I took, made a video on this a long time ago on my channel, most feared and respected inmates in prison, is the Muslims. You, you don't get into the mix with them. They go extremely hard for their beliefs, man. And if you're messing with one of their brothers, man, it's almost like a death wish in prison at least. And that was one of the major things that I learned very quickly about prison is the religious factors involved here, man. There's a lot of different religions you're gonna see if you step foot in there. And people take them extremely serious, willing to die for them at a drop of a dime. So always, if you happen to be taking that road, you land yourself in jail, prison, no matter where, not only do you respect everyone, but you better most definitely respect their religious preferences. And definitely in some prisons, respect their sexual preferences. Because for sure, they got a boyfriend that's willing to kill for them as well. Everything when it comes to politics, race, religion, all this debatable stuff out here in the streets is amplified in prison. 
gangs. I mean, all that stuff amplified times 100 and people will die for it. But hopefully you enjoyed this little ride through the comment section. Like I said, I'll leave the link to the full video of what we were talking about in the comment section below in the description of the video. If you want to watch it yourself and stay tuned, like I said, maybe tomorrow or the next day, we're going to be speaking on that uh, Uso gang member from Hawaii that they are trying to give the death penalty to for doing some gruesome things to another inmate. And of course, salute to Tyler for giving us an authentic reality check of the Missouri prison system. Doesn't matter where you're at, man. You can get got behind those walls. But in the meantime, tap that like, subscribe, notification bell. And as always, y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.